This presentation will familiarize you with the Kentucky Public Service Commission's methodology for calculating water loss. It discusses who should use the form and provides step-by-step -step instructions for doing so. The new water loss calculation form is the end product of an administrative proceeding before the PSC, case 2018-00394. The PSC initiated this case because its review of a number of utilities experiencing significant levels of water loss revealed a lack of uniformity and rigor in calculating water loss. In order to provide consistent and accurate reporting of water loss, the PSC initiated the administrative proceeding making all jurisdictional water utilities parties to the case. As a starting point, the PSC proposed a water loss calculation methodology and form. After receiving input from the utilities, the PSC developed the form that is the subject of this presentation. At present, only those utilities that have been specifically ordered by the PSC to use the new form are required to do so. However, the PSC is in the process of revising its regulations to require all jurisdictional water utilities to adopt the form for their calculating and reporting of water loss. Until that requirement is in place, the PSC strongly encourages all water utilities to begin using the form immediately. The new form is available on the PSC website. Find and click on the tab that says Utility Information. The third item on the pull-down menu is Utility Forms. Click on it. That will open the Utility Forms page. Find and click on the tab titled Water. The new Water Loss Form is the first item listed under the tab for Water. There is a link to the form in Excel format. Users who do not have the Excel spreadsheet program on their computer will need to obtain the software from Microsoft. Clicking on the link to the spreadsheet brings up a box that offers three options. The recommended option is to scroll down to the third option, Save As, and save a copy of the spreadsheet to the computer under an easily remembered and identified file name. To review, the Water Loss Calculation Form is available as an Excel spreadsheet on the PSC website at the Water tab on the Utility Forms page, which is under the Utility Information tab on the PSC homepage. Utilities should download and save the form. A new form should be downloaded each year to make sure that the latest version is being used. The Water Loss Form is an Excel spreadsheet with multiple tabs. The first tab includes instructions for completing the sheet. There are tabs for each month of the year. The final tab is for the year-end total water loss calculation. This is how the form will appear when first downloaded and opened. It will open to the Instruction tab. The other tabs are in monthly order from left to right, ending with the Yearly Total tab. The remaining slides are a step-by-step -step demonstration of the instructions in the first tab. Begin by opening the January tab and filling in the name of the utility and the year. Doing this will fill in the same fields for the remaining tabs. The months will be filled in already. Next, enter the amount of water produced in thousands of gallons. This means taking the actual number, rounding it to the nearest thousand, and dropping the three zeros after rounding. For example, 5,893,437 gallons would be rounded to 5,893,000 gallons and entered as 5893. Do not make any adjustments to this number. This should be the amount of raw water taken into the plant. A system that uses wells for all or part of its supply should use this line to enter the quantity of water pumped. Next, enter the amount of water purchased, rounding to the nearest thousand as with the amount of water produced. The amount entered should be the total of all water purchased as measured by master meters at system intakes. The spreadsheet will automatically total the two numbers. The next step is to enter water sales for each of the broader customer classes in thousands of gallons using the same rounding rules. There may be multiple meter sizes and rates within a class, particularly for commercial or industrial customers.
The figures for water sales should reflect thousands of gallons billed for the month, whether or not payment has been received. The figure for sales is for revenue producing water only. Do not include any water provided free of charge. Sales to public authorities such as fire departments or government agencies typically are made at a special rate specified in a special contract or tariff. If there is no charge for the water, it is to be reported elsewhere on the form. The form will keep a running total of sales as each category is entered. The final line in this portion of the form is for entering revenue from all other sales. Any entry on this line has to be accompanied by an explanation in the highlighted box. Without an explanation, the form generates an error message as shown and no total for the category will be calculated. You will be unable to proceed until the explanation is provided. Other sales may include items such as sales under special tariffs for certain uses or recovery of the cost of water lost due to excavation damage. It is expected that this category will be a small portion of total sales. Once lines 7 through 13 on the form have been filled out correctly, the form will calculate total sales. The next step is to enter water usage which does not produce revenue, but which is for a proper and authorized purpose. As with the preceding portions of the form, this is entered in units of thousands of gallons. Water used by the utility for its own purposes, principally in the water treatment plant, should be entered on line 17. This would include functions such as back flushing of filters, washdowns of the plant, and other uses at the treatment plant or other facilities such as pump stations. If the utility operates a wastewater treatment plant or provides water at no cost to a wastewater treatment plant, it should be entered on line 18. This would include functions such as cleaning the plant. If the utility charges a wastewater facility for any portion of its water usage or all water use, that quantity of water should be entered on the appropriate line in the previous section. Water used to flush a water utility system is entered on line 19. This is distinct from water used to flush portions of the water treatment plant. Water used to clean the distribution lines, maintain chlorine residuals, or reduce levels of trihalomethanes or haleacetic acids falls under this category of non-revenue usage. Any water provided to fire departments at no charge, whether for training, firefighting, or other purposes, is to be recorded on line 20. If a fire department was billed for water, such as water supply to a fire station, that is to be included with sales to public authorities in the previous section. Any utility that allows a fire department to use water at no cost must require the fire department to submit quarterly reports documenting its water usage. This is a legal requirement under Kentucky statutes and PSC regulations. Utilities that allow fire departments to use water at no cost are required by Kentucky PSC regulations to include in the utilities tariff a provision that imposes a penalty on fire departments that fail to provide the quarterly reports of water usage. As with water sales, the section for reporting non-revenue authorized usage includes a category for other usages not covered elsewhere on the form. Any usage in this category also must be accompanied by an explanation. Failure to explain the usage will generate an error code and prevent completion of the form. If lines 17 through 21 are completed correctly, the total non-revenue authorized water usage will be automatically calculated on line 22. The last numbers to be entered are those for water loss. This includes all water that is not sold, not used by the water system itself, or not used for other proper and authorized purposes that do not generate revenue. All amounts listed in lines 25 through 29 of this section should be documented through records maintained at the utility's office. Those records are subject to examination by the PSC, including as part of a utility's routine inspection. The first three categories should account for the bulk of the water loss experienced by most utilities. Tank overflows include water lost by overfilling or overtopping of storage tanks. It does not include water lost through slow leaks in tanks or through catastrophic failures of tanks. 
Line breaks should include water lost by a severing or other major failure in a water line that leads to a loss of service or pressure to all or part of the system. Line breaks that are the immediate result of excavation damage should not be included in this category. Line leaks include all water lost through chronic leaks in distribution lines other than those severe enough to be categorized as line breaks. Generally, a line leak will not require immediate repair, whereas a line break will create a loss of service or pressure and need to be repaired immediately. Because these numbers are often hard to determine with precision, it is acceptable to use best estimates. Make sure to retain supporting documentation for those estimates. Excavation damage losses should be listed on line 28 only if the utility was not reimbursed for the water that was lost. For example, if the utility itself broke a line during excavation, the water loss would not be reimbursed and the gallons lost should be listed on this line. If the responsible party reimbursed the utility for the value of the lost water, the quantity of water should be listed as other sales in the water sold section with an explanation provided. Keep in mind that paying to repair the damaged line is not the same as paying for the water that was lost. If the responsible party paid for repairs but not the water, the quantity of water lost should be entered in this section on line 28. Water lost through any form of water theft, such as unauthorized connections or bypassing or tampering with a meter, is to be listed on line 29 unless the cost of the stolen water was recovered from the customer. In those cases, the amount of water should be included in the water sales for the appropriate customer class. If the exact amount of water stolen cannot be determined or estimated from a customer's prior usage records, the utility may estimate the amount by basing it on average monthly usage for the corresponding customer class. Water loss due to other reasons should be listed on line 30. This could include causes such as tank leaks or malfunctioning meters. Utilities should provide an explanation for these losses. Losses that cannot be attributed to any known cause should also be listed on this line with a notation stating that the cause is undetermined. Losses on line 30 should represent only a small portion of the overall loss. An explanation should be provided for any losses listed on line 30. Without an explanation, line 31 will not total. If the totals for water sold, non-revenue water provided for authorized uses, and water loss do not add up to the total of water produced and purchased, an error message will appear on line 33, indicating a mismatch between the total water purchased and produced and the total water sold, used, or lost. One or more of the entries on the sheet will need to be adjusted in order to produce matching totals. Once the totals for water sold, non-revenue water provided for authorized uses, and water loss equal the total of water produced and purchased, the error message on line 33 will disappear and the form will calculate the correct percentage water loss for the month. Each month should be calculated in the same way. Do not simply enter the same numbers for each month. Keep in mind that utilities are required to maintain true and accurate records and that all records are subject to review by the PSC. As the data for each month are entered, the form will calculate a running total for each line item in the spreadsheet and will calculate the water loss for the year to date. The total water loss will be calculated from the cumulative totals for water produced or purchased, water sold, non-revenue authorized use, and water loss. It will not be a simple average of the water loss percentages for each month up to that point. In this example, the annual totals shown are for the months of January and February, as shown earlier in this presentation. Once the form is completed for all 12 months, the form will calculate the total water loss for the year. That number is to be provided to the PSC when reporting annual water loss. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you need more information or assistance in completing the water loss form, call the PSC at 502-564-3940 and you will be directed to the appropriate member of the PSC staff.